So this here has been my server for the last couple of years. It's an HP DL180G6. Um, it's a 2-year dual socket 1366 server. Came out probably in around 2009. I've had it for about 2 years. It's been running fairly well most of the time. I've been running CentOS and Over on it basically the whole time I've had it. It has about 28 terabytes of drives with 14 of them, which I get about um, 18 TB bytes of usable storage due to um, RAID 5s and just terabytes versus TB bytes. Um, power consumption wise, it's chugging more than I'd like at about 220 to 230 idle. And under a max CPU load, we're looking at about 270 watts of power consumption. So up for its replacement, I got parts for Ryzen 7 on the way. Uh, should be much lower power, um, which people are saying idling without drives at around 50 watts. With drives, it should be about 100 watts idle. A max load with drives is probably about 200 something. So that's going to be a good amount less power. Saves a bit of money on the electric bill and about twice as fast CPU wise and because I'm using HBAs now I can run ZFS which I want to do yeah it's just overall a better platform it works a lot better with PCIe storage than these old guys did I have no slots in this guy due to how it's set up with it having the drives in the back instead of the slots that's how I got it can't find the slots anywhere nearly cheap online so here's the new Ryzen system that's replacing it so we got a MSI X370 board the reason I went X370 is I wanted all the slots because B350 forces you to have a single 16x off the CPU. X370 lets you go 88, which I wanted because I I couldn't. I'm gonna need a GPU in one. I'm getting an X1 no GPU, so I'm hoping I can put uh, my 710X1 right here. Um, and then maybe I'll put an SSD or another RAID card, a 10 gig NIC or something in it later on. Um, I was trying to do GPU pass-through, but this board just is, isn't happy, and, you know, I don't want to spend forever messing with GPU pass-through on this guy. Um, what else do I have? That's a 8800GT right now. It's going to go a place of 710 to save some power. Thinking about power, we're currently pulling 150 watts, which is already 70 watts less, but I only have four drives connected right now. I'm going to use this Corsair CX, I think it's a, no, it's a CS750M. Works fine, works fine. 80 plus gold, save a bit of power there. Big glowy cooler on it there. Right now I'm running four drives and my SSD, testing some drive failure. So I pulled a drive out just to see what would happen. I got a Dell H200. I think it's been flashed, I don't know, but it works fine. Shows, doesn't need any configuration, doesn't show anything on startup, and it shows all my smart data, so I'm not complaining at all. Uh, I'm doing a bit of failure testing, so I pulled a drive out and just seeing what ZFS does and seeing if I can restore it, just making sure everything works fine. And then I'm going to do a reinstall because I was just messing with stuff in stupid ways and I'm going to do a reinstall. Uh, drive wise, we got about a 40 gig boot partition on the SSD. We got another 40 gigs of swap. Considering using ZRAM, if you have any experience, tell me in the comments. Um, and then I was going to do about 20 gigs of a ZIL. I'm going to see how well the ZIL does. I'm going to do a bit more benchmarking with it, see how useful it really is. If it turns out to be really useful, I might get a little one of those 32 gig Intel Optanes and shove it in here because it's relatively cheap, um, very high IOPS, um, especially at low QDEPS SSD. That works perfectly fine, especially for ZIO use. I think I'm going to have about a 40 or 60 gig L2 arc on it as well for just a bit more caching. Got 32 gigs of RAM. I'd love to have 64, but I don't want to spend 600 bucks on RAM. And there's the system. Um, later on, once I finish testing this install, I'm going to put all the drives in from my old server, so that's going to be, or some of them, I'm going to put four, four terabyte reds and four two terabyte reds. They should all be fine. They probably have about 20 to 30,000 hours. I got them at slightly different times. So the case is in there. This is a Norco RPC 470, and yeah, it is one of the cheaper for you, halfway reasonable cases. I'm starting construction on it now. You can see I'm starting to put the power supply in. Um, yeah, these fans, they're orange, like how Dell's hot swap is. Technically, it's hot swap, but it uses, like, the three-pin fan connector down there. And this is a horrible hot swap system. You can tell it's cheaper, because it just uses this connector here, which works, but it's not great. Um, the drive base. I hunted online for a manual, because I couldn't find out how to do it, and it took me a while to realize, oh, it's these screws that let you take them out. It has a very interesting way for mounting the five and a quarter inch base, but I mean, I guess it works. Can't really put these hot swap ones in with the default, um, the default filter as a piece of metal here. So I guess I just put the filter without the metal and maybe put a little bit of tape in so it doesn't fall out. 
has a locking front. This is fine. I don't know if it's a different key. I don't really care about security of this guy that much where it's going to be. Power LEDs has LEDs for network, so I'm going to consume a board so it doesn't support it. Front USB 3 and 2. Never going to use it, so that's fine. Not much else to say. It's a bit confusing. Nice thing is it's all screwed, so you can take it up probably as much as you want, but comes with five fans, so two in these drive bays. Two trolled five drives. Quote, 10 drives in here plus three in the front, so I'm going to total of 13 drives. And I'm going to put an SSD in it, so that's pretty nice. I'm just going to use all my ports up. And it's relatively roomy in here. Let's get this build done, see how it looks once it's built. So now I've finished the build up and I'm ready for our first test and install. Uh, looking inside, working system. The cabling is horribly messy. There's no way to manage the stupid cables in here. This like fan spot area is filled with cables because you're running 13 drives up doing this guy. The other thing is that since there's no manual or anything, you better know how the system's built and stuff because the standoffs aren't in the right spot and there's no labels at all. So yeah, let's hope everything works right. I'm pushing the power button now. Yeah, it doesn't turn on. So it looks like the power button in this case doesn't work right, or I'm doing something wrong, because... And I'm trying using the reset switch as the power button now, which doesn't work either. Okay, so it doesn't turn on due to the power switch not being wired up correctly. <laughs> like a, um, so basically, the power switch is supposed to be a normally open push button switch that's attached to the... Um, just depends on that. But apparently it's also connected to ground, and for whatever reason, my motherboard doesn't seem to like that. So, it technically will short it, but it's going everything to ground, and if I plug it in one way, it just is like it's always plugged in. If I plug it in the other way, it doesn't turn on at all. So I guess I'll just make it so that in the BIOS, it always turns on when it sees power. The other interesting thing is it has a single USB 3 and a single USB 2, I thought it would be wired up so the USB 2 is just pulling off the USB 3s because each one of these ports on a motherboard has two connectors, but it's two cables. So you do have to plug in the second little cable on there. This is wired up ARG. They need to fix this. This is done pretty cheaply as well. The other fun thing is this is a lot of screws and just a horrible thing. The nice thing is you can take it apart. It's just a lot of screws and it's not easy. So we're just going to make it so we're going to short it out once, go into the BIOS, tell it to always power on whenever it has electricity. But here we are on the BIOS, can't say I'm clearly a huge fan of it, but it works. Um, set it to UEFI boot only, no reason to leave that um, legacy on. Uh, logo display, leave that off, it's annoying. Num lock on and boot. Auto close CMOS, info boot. Um, yeah, I forget exactly where the settings were. System status, no. Advanced, um, uh, it's power management setup, yep, yeah, power, um, after a AC power loss, we're gonna just say power on, so now every time the system is plugged in, it'll power on, um, and then now we're gonna boot it off the installer USB, which I'm plugging in right now, um, and it do it, noise-wise, you can probably hear it now, it's definitely quieter than, like, a normal Dell or something. These fans don't have any speed control right now unless I want to mod them to spin slower, which I definitely could do. But it's not horrible and I don't mind the noise at this point in time. But yeah, they're apparently horrible at wiring up those front panel connectors. It doesn't even want to boot when there's a um, USB flash drive connected in the front, but it boots perfectly when it's connected in the back. So now we're booting into the Proxmox installer. I've installed it a few times just to play with stuff, but now we're actually going to do it for real. It looks like the hard drive and power LEDs work fine, which is cool, because I'm never going to use the rest of it. It turns on when I plug it in now, and it it will um, show me if my hard drive is being accessed, except for all the hard drives that are connected to the RAID card and stuff. So either there's some different standard for server boards this is designed for, which I doubt there is, or more than likely they just screwed it up and it's a cheap board and they don't really care. So here we are now in the installer, and we only have a keyboard, so it's pushing a lot of tabs. And just to annoy me, apparently I cannot do it with just a keyboard. So here it shows me my only drive that I have, or oh, I actually have a flash drive too, but not putting it on there. Options, we're going to use EXT4 because it works fine. Uh, so yeah, so the amount of hard drive you want to use, the amount of swap size, I'm going to do 40 gigs. 
I've kind of decided I don't have a ton of rams. I'm going to swap it. I'm going to play ZRAM more in the future. Max root size. I'm going to do 40 digs here too. I don't need too much. Minimum free space. Um, yeah, so... Maximum size for the data partition is zero. I'm going to delete that anyways. And then minimum free. I don't care. Uh, so now we're going to hit next. And it's going to say what country am I in? I'm in the U.S. Actually, I'm in Los Angeles time zone. And next. And then I will type in my password. And then you set all your basic network settings. You hit next. And it will do the install. It's going to be pretty small because it's a relatively lightweight OS by itself. And it's doing it locally, so it's not pulling this off the network. So yeah, just partitioning. And then it's going to copy the files over. And then we're going to reboot it. SSH in. We're going to update it and do a few quick things right now. Well, all the data's already been copied off this guy, so I don't need him anymore. I sent him the shutdown signal and told him to shut down in the OS, but apparently it doesn't want to listen. So we do it the manual and slightly better way. Yank it out. It's not going to be powered on for quite some time now. And it's quiet again. And we're going to have to rip the drives out. Basically, the only thing I care about in this guy right now is the drives, because... I forget which bays I even put them in now. There you go, WD Reds. I got quite a few terabytes of these in there, so it's gonna take these all off and dust them off now. And then put them in the new guy. So I finished up setting up the software and set up some shares, so I'll show you how that works in a little bit. Now it's ready to move for a rack, so here's one quick look inside. All the pretty software and everything's in here. All the cables, fans. I have all the drives in it now, so it has eight drives right now on each side and we're just going to take it to the rack, set it up, and then I'll show you the basic software stuff. So it's basically just Proxmox and then a basic ZFS file server. And now it's installed, it's been running for a couple days, sitting in the rack, looks pretty fine. I don't have the rails for it, and I don't want to mount it just on the front ears. So it's sitting on the bottom, I'm going to try to get rails or a shelf later. It's pretty huge. And yeah, you can see all the glowing coming out of the back, and basically the network and power cable. And then I have a KVM plugged into it as well. KVM doesn't seem to support the output on this just due to different frequencies, but I don't need the KVM right now. And now here it is logged into the terminal. I can see all the ZFS stats here. So currently there's no errors on my drive. Currently running a scrub and most of the way done. ZFS IO stat shows there's not too much happening right now. It's basically just running the scrub, reading quite a bit of data, and there's a couple of random bytes from all my VMs. There's a whole lot of devices mounted on here because it mounts every single one differently for ZFS, mounts all the data sets differently. And the Proxmox interface, I mean, there's GPU usage is happening. Um, yeah, not too much else to say. It's been running well as my home server for a little bit. And stay tuned for updates and if anything needs to be done to this guy soon, hopefully not too much. Memory usage is actually pretty low, staying right now only at roughly nine gigs. Quite a bit of it's used as a buffer though, here, so um, yeah, you can see a lot of it's being used as a buffer here, and the other thing is it's swapping out a good amount, swapping out five point some gigs, probably just because it never uses it. And also Proxmox is pretty good about not using data that it doesn't need. 